Well, it's finally here. Uh, Star Trek Picard, the first episode called Remembrance. And, uh, hey, why that? Well, Picard is remembering a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, well, it's about what I expected somewhat. I would have thought that the first episode would have included most of the guest spots of the previous characters and then that, that would be that and then we'd move on with this new cast uh, except for uh, Patrick Stewart of course would he would remain the show's called Picard for a reason and uh, but it looks like they're going to stretch that 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 idea for a, for a while <laughs> and that's probably a good idea on their part <laughs> cuz the good stuff is of course Picard himself and it it does pay more uh, homage, if you will, to the previous Trek than Star Trek uh, Discovery did. Star Trek Discovery didn't even bother until they got worried and scared and scrapped their ideas for season two and ended up doing a Star Trek Pike series, but but then fumbled that ball terribly. Uh, but here, uh, right out the gate, there's a lot of nods to Star Trek uh, The Next Generation, even though they said, look, it's not going to be a sequel to The Next Generation. And I imagine by the time this thing gets underway, probably, I don't know, by the third or fourth episode, it's not going to bear any resemblance to it. Uh, already you can see the signs in this, but this episode in and of itself is not terrible. I was not horribly offended by it. Uh, as a fan of Star Trek, um, and but I could easily notice that this it, there's some like I said nods to Star Trek, but quickly it's no longer Star Trek. Plus, uh, the this is a uh, an arc story, so what Star Trek w uh, would do with a plot in one or maybe a two parter episode, this one's going to do for an entire season, which is standard since Star Trek Discovery, uh, and it it doesn't always work uh but here the star trek picard is more superhero action type styles here i mean literally there's a scene where the main character is not really picard but this mysterious woman who is yes no surprise the daughter of data but how well uh i guess they don't know about the other daughter that he had but she ended up dying in on the old series but uh well i guess he tried again <laughs> Or no, he didn't. Someone else did. Uh, so now it takes its premise from what happened from the Star Trek 09 film in which Romulus was destroyed. And of course, this sets up the thing of supposedly the original universe, but then now maybe it isn't, but then maybe it is again now. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but the idea that Picard would be involved in something like that uh, made sense uh, for a springboard for new stories, and this is what they're doing here. But as I recall, I didn't read the comic book, but I saw snippets of it where there was this prequel comic book discussing that very thing, and Data was in it. So it stood to reason that Data had successfully downloaded uh, his memory and what have you into the the, uh, the B4 android in the Star Trek Nemesis film uh, because Data was destroyed in that film and so here was their quick search for Spock thing <laughs> where Data could live on uh, in the copy of him in B4 well this show establishes that didn't work B4 is in, in parts now stuck in a locker at uh, the Daystrom Institute and that's that plus uh androids have been uh a band because uh they went nuts during the rescue of the romulans and uh attacked mars and destroyed it and mars is apparently in flames at this very at the at the in the present time of this episode uh and so this was a horrible horrific disaster and no one quite understands why it happened but anyway you can't build any new androids so Somebody dead anyway. Apparently, it's this genius scientist that uh, his girlfriend is at the Day Daystrom Institute, <laughs> and she's going to be a regular for the cast now. And uh, she uh, explains this, and Picard uh, says he's he's met the daughter of Data, but then she dies in an explosion and all that stuff, and it's all very terrible. But fortunately, surprise, she had a twin. <laughs> who's living on an old abandoned Borg ship with a bunch of uh, Romulan refugees. Yeah, well, I, I imagine they'll explain that later throughout the show as to why that is. 
and all that stuff. But basically, uh, the superhero action comes in the form of the girl herself. So the 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 twin who dies in this episode, spoiler, uh, her name is Dash or Dosh. And uh, she gets attacked in her, I guess, apartment or what have you by these guys who beam in. They murder her boyfriend. And then all of a sudden, uh, they're saying, oh, she hasn't been activated yet because they know she's a synthetic somehow. And uh, so, of course, I guess because of the scary uh, circumstances, she's activated. So her mutant powers <laughs> manifest and she wipes them all out, even though she's blindfolded or you know has a bag over her head. And while this is all over, suddenly she gets visions of Jean-Luc Picard in her mind. Or Professor X. Yes, calling out to a new mutant who needs to come to the Xavier Institute and learn how to better control her power. <laughs> it's more like that <laughs> than Star Trek. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's what that is. So, also uh, steals a lot from uh, Blade Runner because here she is, she's a replicant on the run and it looks a lot like Blade Runner on the streets and stuff as she's running through her cyberpunk city and uh, so there's there's the elements of that plus the whole thing about androids and aren't they really human and don't they have rights and stuff this is what Star Trek has already covered through the original series so it's kind of stupid to go back and retread that but when you don't have any ideas what are you going to do? The best you can hope for is that they perform it well. Well, <laughs> I wasn't too impressed with uh, Dosh, and I, I, her sister doesn't look to be any different because it's the same woman. Um, and then there's more of this aspect of dreams uh, that Picard has and seeing a vision in this painting that Data painted. And then he goes to the archives and finds that Data had painted this painting, and the painting he has, the woman is... You can't see her face, but in the one at the archives, you can see it. And, of course, it's Dosh, as if Data was predicting that he would have this daughter. In fact, the painting's title is Daughter. So there you go. Data is, for all intents and purposes, the father, even though he isn't because they explain it. The theory was that this Dr. Maddox, or whatever his name is, whom I'm assuming we'll meet later. Well, of course we will. And uh, his girlfriend here, I'm just assuming she's the girlfriend. She seems very emotional when talking about him. So, <laughs> you know. uh, And she displays that you could possibly find the, you know, the workings of Data's mind within a single positronic neuron. And, well, they got plenty of those in B4. Uh, so perhaps this guy utilized that to recreate a new, uh, you know, synthetic life form. And there you have it, Data's daughters, one of which is dead now. Uh, thanks to these uh, attackers who turn out to be Romulan, so there's some connection there. And uh, that's the mystery. And, oh, we got to find out what the mystery is. And so there you go. But it's it's not really Star Trek. It's this approach for an other, another type of storytelling from other shows, uh, not how Star Trek handled itself. Uh, so it's not that. So that's a nod against it. And I imagine all the uh, homages and little Easter eggs and treatments uh, just there for decoration and as we go forth it's just going to be this sort of rip off of superhero action type stuff because the girl's going to suddenly realize her superpowers and no one can stop her she's kicking ass all over the place you can shoot at her and she can dodge those uh, at the speed of light ray beams <laughs> <You know? laughs> and all that stuff so Plus, there's a point where she leaps a great <laughs> uh, length, almost flies after one of these Romulans and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's not quite Star Trek, but, well, uh, yeah. So there you go. Star Trek Picard, the first episode, Remembrance, uh, which does it. It probably won't be remembering much long after that of Star Trek, and we'll try to be uh, a sort of Star Wars superhero stuff because... You know, they kind of went to the superhero route with Star Trek Discovery because when Michael Burnham became the Red Angel, see, it sounds like a superhero name, and she's wearing an Iron Man suit. So here you have a character. This Mary Sue will already have her superpowers and will do things that Data never did. <laughs> Not to that extent. Uh, so, but uh, But she's more special because uh, she's mostly human. She has uh, her, her, her body is flesh and blood. So they figured out how to do that. Well, I guess, you know, with cloning and whatnot. Who knows? But anyway, uh, that's about it. It's not really going to be all that a big of a surprise since they pretty much already spelled out what happened. Unless, of course, the big 
uh, shocker will be that she's actually got Borg elements in her or something. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. All that they can hope for is that the performance will deliver it more in an entertaining fashion. Uh, beyond that, there's really nothing to look forward to, you know, action and explosions and stuff and space battles. But um, as for Star Trek, which you didn't really know what would come, because even though there was an ongoing narrative within the relationships of the characters and they would refer to past episodes and stuff, it wasn't like a, lo a season-long episode, you know. But that's what you get from this version of uh, Star Trek, and that's what you're going to get here. Uh, so I can't say that it's a bad episode. I didn't see it that way. Uh, there's problems in it, of course. Uh, it's not as bad as Star Trek Discovery, but give it time. <laughs> so, but uh, it kind of turned out what I thought it would. I just I thought that some of the cameos would probably be more prevalent in the first episode than, than not, but I guess they're going to drag that out for a little while. Or uh, maybe even later on. I don't know. But... Um, but that's about it. It's just there for, look, it's so-and-so. Yeah, and then move on. Uh, so there you go. Oh, and you do get a shot of the Enterprise, the old Enterprise from Next, uh, Next Generation. But it's just a dream. <laughs> but at least there's that, you know. All right. Uh, do I recommend it? No, not yet. <laughs> it's just this one episode. And it's not all that great. But it's not all that horrible either. So it's just sort of, eh, there it is. <laughs> We'll see what they do next week. Thank you for watching and listening. Say, why not like and subscribe and check out the many links below that'll take you to my many stores that have plenty of goodies for you. And you can catch the Mr. Nelson Show, my podcast, over at RadioMisfits.com and watch my videos over at BitChute. Yes, that's the Mr. Nelson channel at BitChute.com. <laughs>